We're here to celebrate the great Tony Lewis, voice of the outfield. Here's a wonderful album. I know everybody here, most of you here have this record or, or had this record on cassette or, or uh, a record or CD. And I remember buying this exact album as a kid with my allowance and, and uh, just really savoring every song. And, uh, you know, when certain artists pass away, depending on the news cycle, it seems like the media passes over it. And uh, one of the moments that actually inspired the work that we do here uh, with interviews and with capturing the stories of the songs and the memories and the essence of, of these great artists is uh, when, when Dan Fogelberg died. Dan Fogelberg always thought he was such a sincere voice and, and loved, um, I loved his music, he grew up on it. And when he died, you know, there wasn't any big spreads in Rolling Stone or a tribute from People Weekly. I mean, it barely was was talked about, and it really broke my heart. And that's when I decided, man, we've got to honor these artists, these great artists, because they've, they've written the songs and created the songs that, that are the soundtrack to our very lives, the checkpoints of our own personal history from, you know, when we were little kids riding our bikes and and uh, and and lit, hearing music for the first time in the car with our with our parents or with our family, you know, on a on a vacation or a trip, um, hearing those songs, uh, they're the themes to our our proms, our homecomings, our uh, weddings when we first met our spouse or had our first child, and uh, so important. And uh, I feel like the the rockers or the the star, the the, the artists of the, the baby boom era from, from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, which we celebrate mostly on this channel, those, it's really tough and it's becoming tougher every day that we are just, uh, unfortunately, we, I, I always thought that these, these, uh, these artists, these great artists were immortal. I mean, when you're a little kid, you think, you know, they're immortal, you know, they're, 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 uh, we're mere mortals and they're immortals writing these in, incredible songs and music. And, uh, and they, you know, they're just, they're, they're human beings just like we are. And, you know, we think that as little kids, uh, but then we learn, but, uh, anyway, I feel like it's so important to capture the essence of these artists as, as human beings, um, and the power of their music and what it's meant to us throughout. Same thing kind of happened with, with Glenn Fry when he passed. Uh, it was just a about six or seven days after David Bowie had passed and, it seemed like in the news cycle that things have been forgotten. And in Glenn Fry, uh, there wasn't a lot of talk about that. That was very sad because, you know, voice of, of the Eagles, you know, one of the biggest bands ever. But anyway, in the last two weeks, I mean, Eddie Van Halen, now Tony Lewis, the voice of the outfield, and Spencer Davis. And uh, it's just getting tough. But uh, it's really an, it's, a, it's a humbling thing, very heartbreaking when, when you realize that uh, – how fragile life is, um, how fragile it is, and and uh, that our childhood is disappearing right before our very eyes, but uh, the innocence that that music has brought us will always remain, and that's what's great about this. So anyway, here's the thing about the outfield, about Tony Lewis in the outfield. Um, said this before, but I know that the word underrated has been used a lot in the last 15 years, and people always say, oh, this is the most underrated song ever. Uh, maybe underappreciated is a better word to use, but um, I'm not going to use underrated. Uh, I won't go there. It's just too overused. But I'll just put it this way, that you really should go back and listen to the Outfields albums. Those four, first four albums are incredible. Um, this is a band that was so tight, you know, very type band they're they're like the british journey i mean they have that that same power power pop um they their harmonies are just legendary i would even say in some aspects their their harmonies go beyond a lot of groups uh, from the same time uh just impeccable and um this isn't hyperbole this is uh legendary harmonies this band and tony lewis and john spinks who of course passed away uh 2014 of cancer was a guitarist and songwriter, and of course Tony Lewis uh, was. They were partners together. Uh, Kelly C. Professor, thank you for all you do preserve the soundtrack of our lives. Love you, man. Thank you, thank you for that. 
Uh, I, I've said it. I believe this. I'm just a stand in for all of you. Um, just doing the work that, uh, that, that we all all want. Uh, we want to watch this kind of program and honor these artists. So, again, I just have always considered myself just a stand in for all of you. And and that's why we have this community. We celebrate these gar great artists. But um, John Spinks, again, yeah, he, he passed in, in 2014. Um, and uh, I wanted to recognize, uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm kind of. Thank you to Kelly C. Thank you, Kelly C. That was a very nice uh, comment. Uh, anyway, go, going back, John Spinks and, and Tony were very, very close. When I interviewed uh, Tony a few years ago, he talked about his relationship with John and shared some memories honoring John's memory. And, um, and we're going to share that. I'm actually going to do, we're working on it right now in a couple of days, probably on Thursday, we'll be releasing a, um, a Tony Lewis special, a fiver. We'll be talking about Tony's songs, uh, solo and with the outfield and honoring his legacy and, uh, and a put together video. But, um, you think about how incredible these guys are, um, the outfield, they had, uh, they have five top 40 hits. So they didn't have a lot of hits. Uh, one album that was multi-platinum and another one that was gold. The thing about the outfield though, is that, uh, they have had a huge renaissance in the last few years, uh, really the last five to 10 years. You think about uh, younger artists covering their song songs, uh, Bruno Mars, Katy Perry covered Your Love, I and mean, Your Love is just blown up. I, I don't know, I don't have the exact numbers off the top of my head, but Your Love is over 300 million. I think it's 303 or 304 million views on YouTube. And uh, when I interviewed Tony, they were it was about a hundred million. So it's almost tripled in just a few years because it's such an incredible song. But they've had a renaissance. Not only your love, all the love in the world is at almost sixty million views on YouTube. Um, Say it isn't so. Almost twenty four million since you've been gone. Fifteen million. This is a band that uh, it's incredible music, and uh, their songs are as popular as they've ever been. They're crossing generations just like great music does and I said it before but I, I've always felt like Tony's voice got such a powerful voice and it was uh it was like this part equal parts like Sting I could hear Sting John Anderson of Yes and Steve Perry but there's just something uh more uh, unique in there with those three that, that sounds similar but um He's got a different timbre um, that's totally unique that puts him just in a totally different category. When you hear the opening chords or uh, of, of your love and you hear that voice, when you hear Tony's voice, it just goosebumps. It's a goosebumps voice and immediately. Um, Tony is just uh, just he was an incredible guy, really sweet guy. Uh, he he uh, his manager had called uh, about a year ago. And said, hey, Tony really enjoyed that interview. Do you mind if we use that and put it up on some of our uh, of our, our website and, and share it on like Spotify and Deezer and a few of these other things? Like, absolutely. What a what an honor. And so he did that. And you can see that. Actually, there's a really great piece on your love on our Vivo channel that you can go check out. And it, it's a it's a mini documentary that we went the whole nine yards and really captured a lot of. Uh, to honor that that great song and, and Tony uh, telling the story about it, how he and John came up with it and recorded it and the influence it's had on pop culture. Uh, so Tony Lo Lewis, he was born in uh, London's East End. And uh, in, in the interview, and we'll share this, I'm not going to give it away because he shares a really sweet memory about what really made him want to get into music. But he said it was the Beatles, hearing the Beatles for the first time. And um, boy, if I could tell you how many times I've heard that out of 600 interviews that we've done, I'd say 85 percent of people have said it was the Beatles, either on Ed Sullivan or hearing them, on, hearing them on the radio. And that was the power of that moment. The Beatles overnight started thousands of bands and bands that are still uh, impacting our lives right now. And so. Um, 
he wanted to get into music. He put together a band with drummer Alan Jackman. And then a few years later, they put an ad in the papers. And it's so great. I, I love hearing those stories. I, I hear that a lot, especially with bands that came of age in the 70s and 80s. They would put an ad in the paper, you know, Melody Maker or whatever, and they would look for a guitarist or a singer and they would, would come together. And it was it was almost like destiny. You know, that's how Johnny Marr and Morrissey. Um, well, that's not exactly how they met, but that's how uh, Andy Bell and Vincent Clark from Razor and a lot of different bands met that way by putting an ad in, in the papers. And that's how John Spinks and Tony Lewis came together. Phenomenal writing team. And I want to get to some of your comments here, uh, but uh, I want to go into that. But John Spinks, it was just a special uh, Daniel Mar Marquez. I hope I'm saying your last name right. Thanks for putting me in high spirits. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I have somebody saying uh, it's uh, is it Rick Taylor. So I'm touring with the Thompson Twins back in 88. Sounded as good as live is on the album. Absolutely. Wow. Thompson Twins and the Outfield. Can you imagine? Uh, and a lot of us, a lot of you out there got to see Tony on tour just the last few uh, years because uh, he, did, he did that 80s tour. That's actually where I interviewed him. and I got to see him live. He sounded really good live. And uh, his new album, and we'll get to that, his new album that came out a couple of years ago was really tremendous and very soulful. And I know that he was really proud of that album and so excited to, to write music again and uh, to honor John. But anyway, they met John Spinks from the ad in the mill in not the Melody Maker. I, I'm not sure what paper it was. I'll have to check on that. But um, first they put together a, a, a band called Series B that was a, a prog rock band. I know that Tony was very inspired by Yes. He told me that... Uh, John Anderson was a huge influence on him. And, uh, and then they put together uh, this prog rock band. And it happened, the timing wasn't great because it happened right when punk rock was, was hitting. And so they called themselves the Baseball Boys. And they, you know, they were a little bit more power pop. The Baseball Boys, they were inspired by the movie The Warriors. Man, that was such a big movie. I kind of missed that. I mean, I saw it later. It came out a little earlier, but I know a lot of people that were in their, uh, their uh, older teens and early 20s, loved the, warrior, the Warriors. That was a huge. Anyway, they were inspired by that. And when they, they got signed in America, they told me that, uh, that they, they said, well, you can't call yourself the baseball boys because uh, baseball is a huge sport in, 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 uh, in America and it doesn't really work baseball boys and he didn't know anything about baseball so they became the outfield because there were three of them alan jack and john spinks and, and tony lewis power pop trio and uh three people in the outfield so that's how they did that changed that name and i remember in the interview he was telling me he didn't know what it was he didn't know anything about baseball or even cricket anyway i'll share that in a couple days it's really funny some funny comments there but in 85, when Play Deep came out, I mean, this record, are you kidding me? This was back to front, every song, so great. Um, one of the best records of the year. And, and it started to grow in popularity. Uh, of course, uh, Your Love was what really pushed it. Say It Isn't So was the first single that was released, and that went to number 18 in the rock charts. And I love Say It Isn't So. I love that that beginning, that vocal well. Uh, wish I could show it on here, but we're live streaming. But you can check that out, obviously, if you go listen to Say It Isn't So. But uh, you're right. Play Deep, Lisa. Lisa says, Play Deep is timeless. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Toured with keyboardist Reg Webb and Graham Leslie on guitar. Graham Leslie. Um, yeah. Um, so anyway, your love went, it was huge. He came back, he went back home for the holidays and came back and there was just an explosion in 86. That was the song, song of the summer of 86. And, uh, seems like every decade I kind of cover this on the song. And if you, if you want to go look at the, the story behind, uh, behind your love with Tony, basically telling us the exact story of it, you can go check that out a little deeper, but. But it, 
there's always been a great cheating song in every decade, it seems like, you know, and in the 60s is a, is a heard through the grapevine by, by Marvin Gaye and uh, 70s, you know, me and Mrs. Jones and and uh, in the 80s, there were a couple of them. But uh, your love, I think, definitely takes the cake for being one of the biggest. And uh, in the 90s, you know, Creep, TLC and. And there have been quite a few others cheating songs. You're cheating heart in the fifties, you know, with, uh, with Hank Williams. And we actually talked about that, uh, Tony it's in the first time you heard that, but, um, it's just such a distinctive guitar riff, right? When you hear that song, you're instantly turning it up. It's just so great. And, uh, Josie's on a vacation far away. In fact, that's a song that if you tell people like your love, it's interesting because I was talking to somebody today, um, a neighbor of mine who isn't big music fan, doesn't know much uh, in terms of music. I think just knows, you know, bigger artists that, that type of thing. I, I like maybe like a Taylor Swift or something like that. And uh, just, you know, passing interest in music. And they, they, I, I was talking about, yeah, uh, great artist died today. Lead singer, of the, the outfield, Tony Lewis. And he said, Oh, the outfield, that sounds familiar. Um, what are they seeing? Well, that's always what they ask. What are they seeing? I said, well, your love was a huge hit. I don't know that song. I see a Josie's on a vacation far away. Oh yeah. I love that song. That's one of those songs that people don't necessarily know the title, but they definitely know you just, you just say that the first few lines of the, of the, the song and people are like, Oh yeah, I love that song. And that's one of those songs. Really great. So anyway, like I said, your love has become so huge in pop culture. I mean, it's been used in a lot of movies lately and uh, Grand Th Theft Auto Vice City. In fact, I'm going to do a piece on Grand, Th Grand Theft Auto Vice City because we have, we lit, I, I was counting it up the other day. I'm, I'm taking a little bit of a, I digress here a little bit, uh, going off on a tangent, but I was counting up, you know, Flash FM and some of the stuff off Grand Theft Auto. And we have like story behind like 70% of those songs. What's cool about Grand Theft Auto, what that did for a new generation is it really did introduce Toto and the outfield and uh, Wang Chung and so many other artists to a new generation who weren't sure who they were. And then they, of course, paid homage to Phil Collins and Kenny Loggins, who actually are in the game and Vice City Stories. But that that's got to be one of those touch points, you know, where you say that that was was something, you know, like there's there's there are a few things in pop culture that happen where it really brings it back into the public consciousness. Uh, like uh, Family Guy does that a lot. Glee, you know, I don't really love the versions on Glee, but definitely. And uh, some of those that introduce it in video games, Guitar Hero and, and Grand Theft Auto Vice City for sure. Anyway. Thank you, Adam, for all you do. Waylon, we love you, Waylon. You're always commenting every day. I appreciate your comment there. You're a good man. Um, so anyway, if, so Bangin' comes out in 87. Can't forget about all the love in the world. We'll, and we will cover these in, in detail with, with Tony telling the story on Thursday when we release this. And definitely rather hear from Tony than me. I'm just the, in the stand in to get that. But uh, Tony will tell you some of the stories, some of the details behind these recordings. All the Love in the World, number 19 in the U.S., uh, great story. But Bangin' is also a great album. I just love it. And uh, Since You've Been Gone, that was another hit, another top 40 hit for them. Went to number 31, a great rock song. Uh, just, I just love Tony and, um, and John. John's guitar and Tony's voice, the way that they came together was just so perfect. It was it was a match made in heaven for sure. And I know that they're, <coughs> excuse me, they're, they're rejoicing together as they're, they're back together. I call it rock and roll heaven or whatever you believe about the afterlife. But I believe that the two of them are having a great reunion on the other side and jamming for sure. John Spinks, such a great guitarist and voices of Babylon came out in 89. And for those of the, you that haven't heard, if you, if you, if you're a fan of your love, and you kind of have a passing interest in the outfield. You're not too aware of, uh, you know, you know a couple of songs. The first song you should go to, in my opinion, 
is Voices of Babylon. That is such a stellar song. It's just it's just one of those really mysterious. Um, it's got this incredible arrangement in the way that the keys and the and the guitar <coughs> and there's a excuse me. It's a message song for sure. And and we'll we'll talk about that. Actually, Tony uh, goes into detail about those lyrics and the meaning of that song. But it's it's got some lyrics, and I just want to want to share a couple of them with you. Um, we conceived a modern generation. It was free, but now we pay the price. We're the victims of our own creation, chasing rainbows that are pa painted black or white. Watch the struggle of our own temptation, instincts barely keeping us alive, back to the rhythm, rhythm that we all came from. I mean, these are incredible lyrics, really describing the time that we're in right now. And it's, it's, a, it's a great song that you should definitely go listen to. And of course, Diamond Days comes out in 90 and it has, uh, on Diamond Days, it has uh, my favorite outfield song ever and my favorite uh, vocal performance by Tony for you. That went to number 21. It's just a very, uh, his voice, his vocal in it, it's just, he just bleeds desperation, anguish. It's just heart wrenching to hear his his, uh, his vocals, interpretation of For You, which, of course, written by John Spinks, who wrote most of their songs. But it is. It's my favorite performance by Tony because uh, it's just heartbreaking to hear, you know, I'm so sad, feeling blue. The lyrics aren't like all that deep, uh, but his voice brings those lyrics alive to where they're, they're the deepest thing that you've ever felt in your life. It's incredible. Um, again, just... Um, a deeper cut, but I think you guys would recognize it because, again, it was it, it almost hit top 20, number 21 on the pop charts, but it, it was played on radio, I remember, back in the day. And I remember buying Diamond Days and really loving that album. There's a song about John Lennon on there as well. And, and um, anyway, uh, Winning It All was another great song. And and that was, uh, let's see, Daniel Willette. Adam, keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it. Uh, Appreciate you reaching out. Um, uh, so where was I? Just so many great memories. Um, I want to get to some of your comments now before we get into the new album. And we're, we're coming up on, oh, my gosh, it's been 24 minutes. Uh, gosh, you get me talking about music. I go on and on. Uh, clever songwriters, underrated musicians, too. I agree. Very clever songwriters. Only Alan Jackman left. Spinks. Uh, yeah, you're right. Alan Jackman is the, the lone... Uh, the lone man left from the trio. Now this Neil Peart, then Eddie Van Halen. I know, I know it. Neil Peart, Eddie Van Halen, uh, Tony Lewis. I mean, it's just uh, 2016 uh, is another year that was just, it, it, was, it was about on par with this year when we lost Prince and David Bowie and Glenn Fry and, and uh, George Michael and just so many great artists. And, Here's the thing. I, I don't want to I don't want to be negative or, or dark here, but that's what's so sad about this is that the next like 20 years are going to be brutal. That's why this music is so important. I wish that modern music would, would get a clue uh, with and I, and I don't want to make this about modern music, about ma making fun or ripping on mainstream music. Um, I quote a song from the Smiths and it's, it describes exactly how I feel about modern music. Burn down the disco, hang the blessed DJ, because the music, this is the part that's important, because the music that they constantly play, it says nothing to me about my life. I don't, it just doesn't give me, doesn't do anything for my gut. It doesn't do anything for my heart. It doesn't do anything for my soul. And great music should lift you, should, should make you want to be a better person, should make you want to take on the world. And I just don't feel that for modern music. And as we lose these, uh, these incredible musicians, I mean, Eddie Van Halen, I mean, I was listening and I know a lot of you are probably going deep right now with, with a lot of Eddie stuff. But you listen to some of his, his throwaway tracks, tracks he never released and they're better than most people's centerpiece stuff. You know, I mean, like he's just so incredible. And, and you hear Tony Lewis on these songs there's not a voice like that. Now, there's a lot of people that have incredible voices right now, but they don't have the feeling. They have the, they can hit, you know, they can hit from A to B to C and they've got range, 
but there's no emotion there. Where's the imperfections? The where's the and the imperfections come from soul. They come from hearing that crack in the voice. You know, it's like Frank Sinatra used to say that, uh, you know, after a thousand cigarettes and, and uh, hundreds of drinks of Jack Daniels, you, start, you, you really start getting it. You really start. And, and that's so true. It's, it's experience. It's having experience and then emoting that experience to us as listeners. And uh, it's just a sad thing. So I don't want to I want to end on a happy note. And the happy note is this is that Tony Lewis was so excited about his new album out of the darkness and uh, into the light of that is so soulful, such a, it's a spiritual song, very spiritual song. And, and he was so proud of that. And I, I'm going to share that on Thursday. Um, more of uh, 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 Tony Lewis just telling you the story behind these songs. And, uh, and that's, what's great is that Tony was able to, to leave a, a, us a, another album of, of, of music and then songs. And he was so proud of that. And that's what he lived for. He loved music and he loved writing with John and, and uh, loved creating for us to hear. And so he co-wrote a lot of those songs with his wife. And uh, so anyway, I, I thank you for, for taking the time with me. Uh, really wanted to, um, wasn't planning on this when I heard the news this morning. I was just uh, distraught, just, just very, very heartbroken because uh, he was only 62. I mean, Tony is such a, just such a great, great, a great guy. Just a great guy. So, and it means a little something more when you when you've actually spent time with uh, the actual artist and and uh, and see how how inspired and how inspiring they are. Um, anyway, um, kind of babbling here, but uh, my condolences to his, his family and his friends, and uh, we love you, Tony, and thank you so much for the music. The music is what means most to us, and. Um, I'll share that on um, on Thursday. We're going to try to to get that out uh, that that video out uh, of uh, of Tony and and uh, we did about uh, I think it was about an hour, close to an hour interview together, and we're going to share a lot of that and share that uh, down the road as we as we move forward. So thank you so much for for being a part of this, everyone. I appreciate your comments and. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm just, it's very hard to do a live stream and read the comments at the same time and keep your thoughts going. Some are very talented at that. I probably am not the best at that. So I, Adam, never underestimate the influence you're having on the musicians of the future. That's channel. Oh, thank you. That was very sweet. That's Todd Dickinson. I appreciate that. That's what it's about. We really want, uh, we want the music to continue on. So anyway, I uh, thank you so much. Look for the video on Thursday. Appreciate your support in this community. Let's continue to celebrate this incredible music and uh, your support and just watching it and sharing it means so much because we really need to keep the music alive. We need to keep these stories. We need the essence of these incredible artists as human beings and, and the stories of their songs to live on through generation to generation to generation. So until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe out there. And... Um, and uh, think of think of Tony. Listen to some of his music. Honor Tony and the outfield and John Spinks and of course Eddie Van Halen and all and Neil Peart and all these incredible artists that we've we've lost. The best way to honor them is to keep that music going. Listen to those music to, to those songs. So I thank you very much. See ya.